All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. And it's pre recorded. What can I say? Now, today I have a couple of letters that I want to actually read to you. One of them is not really hate mail, it's from a woman. And the other one is from a dude who, uh, he's a younger guy and uh, he's taking positive steps to unfuck his life. All right, first one here. <clears throat> And she doesn't want me to use her name. Okay. Uh, I don't know what race this, this woman is. Uh, she's somewhere in Atlanta, Georgia. Are you the kind of person who's run out of feelings to hurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. Then we have the redonkulous swag for you. And we have multiple locations where you can get it. Go to the Stream Elements store or Crypto Fashion and embrace your inner fat punisher. Because after all, there's a little bad pop in all of us, even your mother. Shirts, stickers, mugs, and hats are on sale now. Your support helps keep us independent from big tech and keeps this life-saving train on the tracks. Links are in the Meat Gazer box. <laughs> and so, so uh, I'm 37. Never married, no kids. I own uh, my own business and set it up when I was 22 years old. All right, so she's been in business for herself for uh, 15, 16 years, something like that. Good on you. Good on you. You didn't. Uh, it doesn't say in the letter if she went to school or not. She probably went to cos, you know, it's a cosmetology school. And then instead of working at uh, another business for, you know, three, five years, you know, she just immediately, right out the gate, set up her own business, which is cool. Uh, I run a salon and now have three locations in and around Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I've had uh, several boyfriends through the years, uh, but the one never materialized. All right, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. My two sisters have kids, and I find myself feeling out of place when I visit them. I uh, find myself thinking that I'm the third wheel, even though I'm the good auntie, yada yada. Okay, I cannot help but feel I miss the boat, and I'm starting to feel the desperation and what I was told growing up helped me get the drive to set up my own business but in the long run set me up for failure in life uh, i'm sorry that you're having this epiphany now i wish you had it uh, in your late 20s you probably wouldn't be where you are right now in a few years i won't be able to have children myself uh, listen at 37 most women are done I can't even have kids, especially if they never had them in the past. I mean, it's one thing if you have a kid every couple of years and, you know, keep the machinery running and well uh, lubed. But if you let it sit in the garage too long and then you take it out and try to drag race it, you're going to blow the engine. It's not going to work. It's never a good thing. Sorry. All right. Uh, I have all the trappings of success. I have two cars, a boat, big house, and I take two vacations a year. <laughs> uh, but I usually go by myself or with uh, a couple of close personal friends, um, and I take them with me so I can avoid uh, feeling alone. All right. Now, loneliness hits women a lot harder than men. In most regards, not everyone, but you know, as a general rule, you can expect that. See, I'm glad you're teaching men about the dangers out there. My brother committed suicide four years ago after his ex wife moved out of state with his kids and left him destitute. You have a lot of advice for men. Do you have any for women? All right, now, first of all, I just want to say. I am sorry you're in this situation, 
okay um and there's I, I did a video a couple of videos in the past on the spinster bubble and uh let's face it never married no kids 37 you're a spinster i'm sorry I, i'm just i'm just telling you the way it is okay um and you bought into the fairy tale Disney uh, world crap about the one will just magically appear and that you know, that almost never happens. All right. Uh, am I going to tell you that it will never happen? No. There's always a chance of anything. You can get hit by lightning walking out of your house. You can win the lotto. Who knows what you know your future holds. But as a betting man, at 37, you ran the clock. And I can almost guarantee you one of those good men, one of those boyfriends along the way, probably uh, would have made a good long-term partner, maybe a father to your kids. But uh, it is what it is. All right. Now, feminism is teaching the women today they could do everything a man can do. And then they are forgetting the fact that, uh, you know, two men in a relationship doesn't work, especially when one is straight. So a lot of these women have the feminist mindset and they want to perform and earn and do everything men do. And then they get to the point where they realize that uh, they're on the wrong path. And most of the time, it's too late by then. All right. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm not in the business of telling somebody how to find a girlfriend or a boyfriend or what have you. I don't do that. I just tell men what to avoid because I have been burned by pretty much all of the pitfalls out there. And I made all the stupid mistakes when I was dick thinking in my youth. All right. It is what it is. Now, I'm glad you have your own business. And with three locations, maybe open a couple more. You know, um, at 37, maybe you could try artificial insemination. Uh, go see a fertility doctor. See what you could do. Um, you're going to have to make a decision. There is no more time. You either have a child or you don't. There may or may not be a father in the picture. It's not for me to decide, but uh, that's all I can say. I look, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry your brother died. Nothing I could do about that. Uh, I'm trying to save as many as I can. Now I went up to 503 uh, of men who've come forward and said that you know my material and channel and show and philosophies kept the gun out of their mouth. All right. I'm sorry this happened to you. I really am. But let's move on to the next one. Okay. Next one. My name is Rick, and I'm 22 years old. When I was growing up, I had no father, and it sucked. Yeah, I've been there. I know exactly what you're saying. I always felt like a, a portion of myself was never formed properly. I got picked on ruthlessly in middle school and high school, and I'm still in my hometown. I started working in HVAC, uh, and mainly because I took your advice of joining a union and uh, not worrying about the whole college uh, situation. Uh, my family's poor. I couldn't afford it, and due to a physical injury, the military's out of the question. Okay, so this individual went signed up for a union in the HVAC or applied at an HVAC place and they trained him and he's working there. I don't know how long he's been there, but HVAC is a decent career. You make decent money and people are always going to need heating and cooling, especially the fatter we get. Okay. Uh, I started watching your show four to five years ago and I don't remember exactly when. You've helped me a lot, and I got my job because of you. I took boxing lessons, now compete as an amateur boxer. He doesn't put his record in here, but it is what it is. Uh, six months ago, 
I was at the bar by my house. I usually went there three to five times a week to get a burger and a beer after work. I used to do the same thing, not a big deal. Uh, That night, one of my life's biggest bullies came into the bar. He was home from college, and he's a fairly well-known football star in the area, and this dude was nothing but a raging asshole. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, all right. Um, Okay, as soon as he saw me, he started talking mad trash and thinking we're back in high school. It got heated, and we both got thrown out of the bar. Once outside, he tried to sucker punch me. Big mistake. I tore him up one side and down the other. (laughs) He was big, strong, and he looked very scary. But like you said, Pop, fighting the untrained is like fighting a baby. (laughs) I like this one. This is good stuff here. Uh, I got arrested for assault. These things happen. You know, men are going to do what men do. Uh, After the prosecutor got the whole story, it got dropped to disturbing the peace. (laughs) Plus, I had to pay for his stitches and getting several of his teeth replaced. Best $5,700 I ever spent. Yeah! Ha! I like it. It was so satisfying knocking that asshole down several times. Thank you for your message. And I am no longer lost. Outstanding. All right. Now, I myself got bullied quite extensively in my youth. And there were several occasions where something similar happened with me. And uh, I didn't get arrested, thankfully. And um, it just is what it is. Um, I had an individual... um, when I moved into Berkeley when I was in the eighth grade, just a savage, just stole my bike, picked on me ruthlessly, him and they had two of his buddies. And uh, it, it was just one nightmare after another. <clears throat> well, eight, was it eight years later? I was like 25, 26. And he... I don't, I don't know. I was walking into, into Mr. B's in Royal Oak, and he was walking out. And he just started talking mad trash to me. I haven't seen this guy in almost a decade. There was no response for me. It was literally a left hook, a body shot, and I swept his legs. He went right to the ground. And he was incapacitated. The liver shot took him out. He, there's nothing he could have done. And I literally stood over him for a good two minutes and lectured him on how if I wanted to, I could have maimed him or killed him on the spot. Okay, this is not fucking high school. And people change. And, you know, it is what it is. Um, I, I I thought for sure I was going to wind up talking to the cops uh, because it was... In front of an entire parking lot of guys and or people, but it is what it is. A couple minutes later, he got up, went to his car, never saw him again. Uh, I'm hoping one day I run into his two buddies, but I'm pretty sure the word is out and they're avo- and they're evading me like the plague. I'm 54. I'm 54 now, so chances are there won't be any of those, uh, you know, knuckle sandwiches and uh, you know kicking a dude's ass, but you never know. Anyway, I thought you guys would enjoy some letters I have here. And uh, like I said before, I'm not the guy to tell you how to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a wife or, or a husband. That, that's not my thing. Okay, I'm a, red, I'm a red pill MGTOW guy. And I'm mainly here to assist men in this crazy, effed up world we live in. Nothing more. Nothing less. 